Hey, welcome to 1.3 Models and Application. And this is a section where we deal with a lot of word problems. And I'm going to go through a few types in this section, and I'll try to stick with those types when we do the homework and when you take your exam over um, this chapter. We'll start with example one, starting salary for college graduate with undergraduate degrees. And this bar graph down here shows the 10 most popular college majors with the median or middlemost start in salary for recent college graduates. So you can kind of look through here, your major might be in here, um, or your um, interest in major might be on here. You can kind of look through here and see look, the highest um, median start in salary for computer science and nursing. Um, those are the highest start in salary. So let's go ahead and look at the word problem. And it says the median start in salary of a business major exceeds that of a psychology major by 8000 the mean starting salary of an English major exceeds that of a college major by 3000 Combine their median starting salaries are 116000 Determine the median starting salaries of psychology majors, business majors, and English majors. Bin a psychology major, business majors, and English majors. Okay. So let's go ahead and look at this problem. There's a lot of stuff going on here. But I hope that you look at this problem and you realize that they're talking about um, or they're referring or basing everything off a psychology major. So, um, business major exceeds the psychology major by 8,000. The um, English major exceeds the psychology major by 3,000. So, everything based on a psychology major. So, let's let x equal psychology major median salary. That's true, then the, if you look at the sentence really carefully, I'm going to write this all over here. It says the business major exceeds the college major by 8,000. So if we have x plus 8, that would be the business major's median salary. In the next sentence, it says, the median starting salary of an English major exceeds that of a psychology major. So whatever psychology major makes, um, the English major makes 3,000 more. So x plus 3 equals the English major's median salary. Okay. So we have uh, three um, expressions. And each one, each expression represents each psychology, each major. I mean, each major is mean salary, psychology, business, English. Okay. So now in the last sentence it says combined, their median starting salaries are one hundred sixteen thousand. So if I take the psychology majors and I add on the business majors and I add on the English majors, so here is psychology, here is the business major, and here is the English major. If I combine them, the total should be 116,000. And notice I don't have 116,000 like this. I don't need that because this right here represents 3,000 more, 8,000 more. So in the end, I'll be able to um, determine the value of um, x, and that would be in thousand. Okay. So let's go ahead and solve this equation. I'm going to get rid of all my fraction notes there. And when I combine uh, like terms of x, x, and x, so that 3x is on the left hand side, I have 8 plus 3 is 11. So plus 11 equals 116. I subtract 11 from both sides. I get 3x equals 105. I divide both sides by 3. I get x equals 35. So go back up to here. x equals 35. With well, the college ma major mean salary is 35, and now we know it's thousands. So good right the sentence. Okay. The median salary or median um, salary for psycho psychology majors. Is thirty five thousand. You do thirty five um, thousand like this. You could do thirty five thousand this way. 
I'll go ahead and do it um, in terms of the dollar value there. The business majors, how do I figure that out? Well, if X is 35, I'm going to add 8 to that, that'll be the business majors. So business majors, median salary, so mean salary for salary major is 35,000. For business majors, it is, uh, what's 8 plus uh, 35 is 43,000. And then, I'm kind of messy right there. So it is, and then for uh, English majors, we're going to take 35 plus 3, so I get uh, 38,000. And 38,000 for English majors. Let's go on to the next example, and um, you're going to notice I skipped uh, example one, now I have example three. Um, this is just based on the textbook that I use, or the textbook we're using, so there's some examples I skipped. So here in example three, I have um, selecting a monthly text message plan, and I know this might not be applicable now because a lot of cell phones just charge you a one-time um, amount or a one-monthly fee for unlimited, but this cell phone um, company has two texting plans. Um, and it's not an unlimited plan. Then plan A has a monthly fee of $20 with a charge of five cents per text. Then they charge you a flat fee of $20 and then five cents for every text you send. Plan B charges $5 a month, but they're gonna charge you 10 cents per text. Both plans include photo, photo and video text. For how many texts would the plan for both, or for how many text messages will the cost be same for the two plans? Okay, so look at plan A. I'm going to go ahead and get my pen up here. So plan A is going to charge you $20 plus $0.05 cents per text. And so we're going to do $0.05 cents times the number of texts. And I'll go ahead and use X. We don't know how many texts we're sending. Plan B has a monthly fee of $5 plus $0.10 cents per text. Again, we don't know how many texts we're sending, so 10 cents times each text. Notice here um, that you're charged, here in plan A, you're charged a $20. You're charged a lot more than this plan initially, but every text message is a lot cheaper. It's only five cents. Whereas this plan is very cheap, it's only $5 to start off with, and then but you have to pay 10 cents per text. Now you want to know when or how many text messages will the plan be the same. So we're going to take each of these expressions and we're going to set them equal to each other. And then we're going to solve for x. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract 0.10x, 0.10x on both sides. Okay. So here I get 20 and I add these two terms together here. Okay, I get 0.05 minus 0.1. I get minus 0.05x is equal to 5. Okay, I'm going to subtract uh, 20 from both sides. I get 0 point, negative 0 0.05x equals negative 15. Divide both sides by this value right here. Negative 15 divided by negative 0 0.05. I get 300. So this means that at 300 text messages, the plans will cost the same. The two plans will cost the same. Later on we'll talk about um, when will one plan be cheaper than the other plan at, at how many text messages and we'll talk about that um, later on in this chapter. If 
you want to check this, make sure it's right, when you plug 300 into here and 300 into here, you'll get the cost for um, both plans. And when you put 300 in here into this first um, plan, you'll get $35. When you put 300 into here, you'll get $35 also. So the plans do cost the same. Okay. On your own, go ahead and try this next problem. Go ahead and pause the video. And when you go ahead and replay the video, I'll have the answer uh, pop up. Okay, so again, hopefully you pause the video and try this on your own. And I went ahead and put my answer on the um, on the screen. And if you have a problem setting up the equation, you have to read the problem carefully. And it, the automobile uh, sh repair shop charged sixty dollars per part. That was a fixed cost. You made sixty three dollars per parts. And the remainder for labor. The labor cost thirty five dollars per hour. So we add on thirty five dollars for labor. Per hour, we have no idea how many hours, so we're going to do X here for the number of hours. Um, and then how many hours labor did it take to repair the car? We know that it charged them a total of 448. That equals 448. Okay. So then I solved this equation right here. And when I solved it, I got X equals 11, so it took 8 hours of labor. Okay. The next example I get a lot of students getting uh, questions on and here it's saying a computer store is having a sale on cameras after 40% price reduction the camera only cost you $276 what was the camera's price before the reduction? So we're trying to figure out the price before reduction or the original price so before reduction So we know that we have an original price, and we don't know what that is. We know that we have 40% reduction. So we're going to take off 40%, which is 0 0.40. And 40%, whenever you get percentage off, is percentage off the original price. So 40% of the original price, which is X. And we end up paying only $276. So the original price minus 40% of the original price. Okay, that's the hard part for us to setting it up. Once I do that, I um, end up paying, what, $276. Now I'm going to go ahead and on the left-hand side, these are actually like terms. This is actually 1 minus 1x minus 0.40x. Okay, so now I have 1 minus 0.4. So I get 0 0.60x equals 276. Divide everything by 0 0.60. So x equals 276 divided by 0 0.60. I get $450. The original price was $460. That should make sense. So you um, you look at the shelf and the camera is $450. You get 40% off that. What is 40% of 460? We'll take 0 0.40 times 460. You got $184 off. So it was $460 on the shelf. You um, get 40% off. And so you get 40% off of 460 is $184 off. What's 460 minus 184? and you get 276 and that's what we end up paying at the end okay. but again to figure out what um, the original cost was we had to actually look at the original cost minus 40% of the original cost we had no idea the original cost was at the beginning so this setup right here is really important to know how to set this up okay. I'm getting end, close to my end of 15 minutes I can start or I can tape so I'm going to go ahead and stop the video and we'll go ahead and start example 6 and the rest of these examples um, in the next video.